church at Lake Chair at Mild, and we're glad each one of you is back with us tonight. Hope you had a good afternoon. I'm trying to do all this off the top of my head, man. The, uh, let's remember all of our sick that's in the book and all of our shut-in. Let's remember Vicki, she's not feeling well today. Um, also, uh, I know after the services today will be the uh, personal work group, so everybody will Stay and help with that would be greatly appreciated. And Slater Marietta, they're having their uh, gospel meeting. It'll be tomorrow and Tuesday. Is that right? Yes, tomorrow and Tuesday at 7 o'clock. So if anybody can go support them, I know they would like, love to have everyone there. And I think he said, uh, is it Ladies' Day this coming Saturday at Augusta Road? Is that right? So it's ladies days is coming Saturday morning at Augusta Road. So if any of the ladies could attend, I know they'd love to see you and agree and everything. Singing at Bowling Springs is coming Friday night at 7 o'clock. So anyone can go over there to not only be uplifting for them and for you too. Into our worship service tonight, our Song leader be Joel Foster, our lesson by Dennis Stein, our closing prayer by Joe Mormon, and we'll begin our worship service with opening prayer. Will you please bow with me? Our kind, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you for this opportunity we can come out and take part in this worship service, and we can be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you for each and everything that you do for us. Thank you for your son, Jesus, as he came to this earth, he lived, died as a man, hung upon that cruel cross and died for each and every one of us so we could have the remission of our sins. If we do thy will. Pray at this time that you'll be with our brother Joel as he leads our scene, that we'll all lift up our voices of praise unto you. Pray that you'll be with Dennis and Vicki, they work here with us at this congregation. Pray that they will have many years of service unto you. Pray that you'll be with Dennis, that he'll have a ready recollection of things he's studied, that, that we'll all listen attentively to what he has to say tonight. We have studied ourselves, applied to our lives, be stronger Christians. 
I also pray that you'll be with all of our leaders of our nations. Pray that they will look unto you for guidance instead of doing things that's against thy will. Pray that you'll be with all the military ones that's on foreign soils and once you pray that you'll keep them safe and return them back to their families. Pray would be <clears throat> be with all the first responders, all the ones that protect us, that you'll always protect them as they are trying to protect us. Pray at this time that you'll be with the church here at Malden, that to each and everything we say and do here always will be according to thy will. And pray that we'll all look unto you for guidance. Pray that you'll always be with us here, that you'll always guard, guide, and direct us, that you'll kill us all of any sins. Christ, I pray. <coughs> Yeah. 
speaks to us. Four, zero, five. Four, zero, five. Love divine, O love excelling, joy that Jesus made is found in John 10 and verse 10. I came that you they may have life and have it abundantly. That is one of the things we really want to have is that abundant life. Earlier in John chapter 4, Jesus meets the Samaritan woman. It's hot and it's by Jacob's well. It is there that he offers her living water that will spring up 
to eternal life. Now there's an awful lot of greatness that is offered to Christians. Now we don't often hold on to these promises, but many times we allow this ugly old world to drag us down. It really does seek to defeat us. It really does because of who the Prince and Lord of this world is to keep us in that bondage of sin. But it was Christ who came and rescued us from that. And Jesus came to give us that abundant life, a life that springs up to eternal life. Do we have a life that is filled with joy? Do we have the joy of the Lord in our hearts? Do we have that peace that passes all understanding? Are we content when we face the trials of life? Do we have a love that makes our relationships deep? The truth is we can have all of those things. It is ours as a gift that God has given us in this life. As with many things, though, there are conditions in order for us to be able to have that gift. <coughs> God just does not zap us with happy pills. He doesn't fix every problem that comes our way because of our own actions. But the Bible does give us the answer to live and how to live that abundant life. It is in 1 Timothy chapter 6 that we find these answers. Paul gives them to Timothy so that Timothy can take those things in his possession. So that Timothy and by virtue of being scripture us, we can possess that abundant life. And if we want to have the abundant life, we need to know what and who is important. In chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, starting in verse 11, the text opens up with these words, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Now, to put that verse in its context, we actually have to read the whole chapter in the very beginning. Because earlier in the chapter, Paul had told Timothy about how some people search for gain, how they use religion as a means of financial wealth. Paul wrote in those verses about the love of money being the root of all kinds of evil. Now, there were people who had wandered away due to the drive to have more. So, this beginning is a warning to Timothy to flee. There are times when we need to run, not walk away from evil. Paul calls Timothy one of the greatest descriptive names given man of God. Sets us apart from the rest of the world. It's what makes us different than everything else and everyone else. We are those men and women of God. And the important part of it is, is we know the difference because we know the truth. 1 John chapter 2 and verses 15 through 17. John writes, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust also. But he that does the will of God abides forever. We 
we face temptations every single day. And I dare say not a single day ever goes by that that temptation is not there in one form or another. It has that temptation that wants to wrap around our feet like a vine and causes us to stumble. But just running away isn't the only step to an abundant life. The last part of verse 11 reads, And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. When we get rid of the clutter in our lives, we need to fill it in with something else. Years ago, my son, they bought their house in Gainesville, Georgia. He was trying to extend and raise his backyard. It had a very steep slope in the back. But maybe the width of a car from his house, he had this huge sinkhole. I know it was a huge sinkhole because my truck ended up in it. The contractor, when they were building the house, the trees they cut down, they buried them. And it rotted away. So there was nothing left in there but what little dirt they covered up with. It ended up taking him about five truckloads of dirt to fill that hole back in. And a tow truck to get me out. You see, we need to fill in these empty things. And we need to put fill in those things that are beneficial to us. Getting rid of the evil that's in our lives and not filling it up with the good stuff is going to leave us empty and vulnerable. Someone once said that separation without positive growth becomes isolation. Pursuing righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. When we fill these attributes in, we begin to completely shed the greed of this life. And we will experience the wellspring of living water. When we look at those lists of things to pursue, it reminds us of what Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 5. There in 16 through 23, Paul goes through a whole bunch of things. The biggest of those lists is the evils that we need to get rid of, to shun. But he also gives us the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits that produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As we walk each day, as we face each day, what are we pursuing? What are we following? What are we fighting? The third step that we must take, verse 12, Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. The idea that Paul is giving here is to fight to the very end. We can't just fight this battle and that battle and, and, and rest in between. We must fight every single time and never give up. It was near the end of Paul's life when he wrote Timothy another letter. In 2 Timothy 2 and verses or 4, verses 6 through 8. Paul had told Timothy how he had fought that good fight. And there's something that we need to remember. The people around us are not our enemies. Our enemies are not flesh and blood. Now that might be the avenue that our enemies use. But our enemy is not people. Our people is sin. Our people is evil. Our people, our enemy is the powers of Satan. Have we fought that good fight? Is our faith going to make it to the very end? You know, we talked, we hear a lot about how hard 
certain jobs are, how difficult they are, how intense they are, but there is no harder job than being a Christian. But this abundant life that we see calls us to action. We need to build our house upon that rock of Christ. And we are called to fight against sin in order to take hold of what Christ has taken hold of us. Flee, follow, fight. There's one more thing that we need to get from this message tonight. All these things I mentioned are what's important. But the what is based upon the who. In 1 Timothy 6, Paul refers back to Jesus standing there in Pilate's hall. It was there that Jesus was asked if he was a king. In John 18, verse 36, Jesus told Pilate that his kingdom was not of this world. Jesus did claim kingship. That he would be crucified with the words above his head, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. These people didn't understand kingship. Let's look at verses 13 through 16, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I give you charge in the sight of God, who gives life to all things and of Jesus Christ, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made a good confession, to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ which he displayed at the proper time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Abundant life, the living water, peace that surpasses all understanding. All of these things come from Christ. We will flee evil. We will follow righteousness. We'll fight the good fight. But we're going to be faithful to Christ, our Lord, God the Father. Years ago, back in Oregon, there was a community college. And there was a shooting there, and it was reported that those in the college who called themselves Christians were the ones that were targeted. Would we die for our faith? Would we take a stand if we thought it would cost us our lives? Would we be faithful to Christ? I hope I would say I would. But I've never been in that situation. There have been countless men and women throughout history who have and who did die holding on to that faith. <coughs> they understood it because it was important. If you ever had the opportunity to read Fox's Book of Martyrs, you could see it. When we become a Christian, Bible teaches that we die to self in order to be born again as a child of God. Tonight are we willing to die in order that we might live? When you can answer yes to that question, then you will know what and who is important in order to have that abundant life. 
the invitation is open to all. If it is your desire to put on our Lord and Savior in baptism, repentance and confession, to have your sins washed away, we want to give you that opportunity tonight. If you just need our prayers, if you need something you need to make right with God in a public way, won't you come as together we stand and we sing. Christ, your broken life, so my by sin, He will create anew, make whole again. Your empty, wasted years, He will restore, and your for the Lord's Supper. If you come forward this time, you'll be served. The table is prepared in the presence of our Lord and Savior. It is this time that, that we can have this closeness and remember just exactly what it was that he had done for us and just how important it is in our lives to remember this. The emblems that we have before us represents the body and the blood of Christ. The body that he willingly allowed to be nailed to that cross, even after he asked his Father in heaven to take this away from him, he knew how important it was to fulfill the will of God. And he also shed that blood from the crown of thorns to the nails that pierced his hands and feet to the spear in his side. He shed that blood for us. Will you bow with me as we do ask the blessing on the bread? Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the deep and abiding love that you have for all of mankind. To send your only son to this earth to live as we've lived and and to endure all the things that we endure, but to overcome it all, to remain sinless in the face of adversity and trials. And we're just so grateful, Lord, that he was willing to go to that cross in our stead, to die for our sins. And as we remember the body that hung on that cross, your precious son, we ask your blessings on this bread that helps us to remember those things. Pray that you will continue to keep these memories deep within our heart each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will continue in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we ask your blessings on this fruit of the vine that represents the blood of your Son that he allowed to be shed on that cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Though he died for the whole world, 
We're just grateful, Lord, that we come together on this day, the first day of the week, to remember that sacrifice as your obedient children. We pray that you will continue to keep this all within our hearts, now and forever, until that time. And we are with you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Leave the basket on the table for those who did not have the opportunity to give. Would you bow with me, please? Our Father in heaven, we are so blessed with the bounty that you give us each and every day. The blessings of life, the, the things that we own, the things that we share, the food that we eat. There's not a single thing on this earth that we have that is ours. As custodians, Lord, of the blessings you give us, we pray that you will accept back a portion of those gifts, that the work of your church here in Malden will continue to be able to spread the gospel to our community, to our missions, for those around the world. That you continue to bless us in this congregation richly as you have done so to, to this day. And we are thankful, Lord, that we have you in our lives. And that is the greatest blessing of all. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Personal works right after services. If you can stay to help with that a little bit, uh, we'd appreciate it very much. If there's nothing further, if we stand, we'll be dismissed with prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with us tonight as we leave this place and go into what our lives for the rest of this week. Pray for the strength that we can gain through your Son Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we we pray for our, the church, the world over, that things might be done in a way which will help your church grow in, in stature and influence throughout the world. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for all the blessings that we have today. We're thankful for our homes and our families, the things that we have each day to carry us through this life. Thankful Heavenly Father for our nation, the freedom that we have in this country. We know that there are many, many, many people in this world that do not have the freedom that we have. We pray that you will be with us and uh, be with our leaders as we lead this nation, that we might be able to uh, maintain our nation the way it is and keep the freedoms that we have. Heavenly Father, we're here we're, we're grateful for all the sacrifice of all of those that made before us and made us country great and free. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church the world over, that it might be growing in influence and in stature. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for the ones in our number who are sick and not well today, the ones who are not able to be with us because of illness. We pray for Sue Dills and uh, Teen Westmoreland, especially, and, and others who are not well today. They might be well again and be able to join us in worship service. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the lessons that Dennis brought to us today. Help us to consider those things in our lives. It will help us to be the better Christians day by day. We pray that you'll be with us now and watch over and care for us. Continue to bless us and give us our any sins. We pray these things in the strong and loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.